My friends, welcome to CK3 and let's talk about runestones. So you can raise a runestone in CK3 and what is rather an obscure decision in this game, even though it gives a lot of powerful effects. For example, you gain 100 faith and the vessel of your faith gains 10 opinion of you and even more important, you gain a runestone in, in the chiefdom of Upland here. Why the chiefdom of Upland? Because that's our capital. And so you get a runestone there and let me show you what it brings you. You get a whopping bonus of 20 popular opinion from a runestone. But what really are runestones? Where they, do they come from? And why do they look so different over time? This is one of the earliest runestones found. It's from the center of Sweden, from Upland, which also had the Temple of Uppsala in it. And it depicts someone on a horse with a shield. And the inscription actually reads Fravaharas. The noble was slain. So that is the basic construction of a rune stone. It's about someone who was slain and who needs to be remembered. The important thing is he's depicted in a in a glorious way and he is slain and of course his name. Names are very important to the Satru, uh, the Norse faith culture. This is also why you in Crusader Kings 3 have ancestor worship as one of the most important things in your religion. As you see, that increases your prestige from level of splendor for newborns by 100%. When getting married also by 100% from a long reign opinion bonus also by 50%. And you gain an additional bonus upon the successful completion of a pilgrimage. And your close family loves you a little bit more. Plus five, our ancestors watch over us beyond the grave, guiding us and showing us the way forward. For this, we must respect and honor them. And rune stones, erecting rune stones, is a way to honor them. And actually in Upland, that is the area where most rune stones ever were erected. This is one of the earliest Danish stones that in Old Norse reads Gunwald's Sten, Sonar Roald's Thular are Salhurgum. So there's no mention that anyone is slain there. The stone that is around 1.25 meters in height reads Gunwald's stone, Hraldr's son, reciter of Salhaugar. Salhaugar is where he came from. And reciter is a kind of a bard for religious texts. After its location, it's named the Snoldelef stone. Later on, the look of the stones changed rapidly. And also the messages went more and more delicate and had also more words. For example, this stone is from Lingsbjerg. Its old Norse transcription means Dan ok huskal ok svein ok holmfrid thal modgin letu retestein thena eftir halftan fadur thera dans ok holmfridr ad boada sin. That means Danor and Huskal and Swain and Holmfrid, the mother and her sons, had this stone erected in memory of Halfdan, the father of Danor and his brothers, and Holmfrid in memory of her husband man. The look of this rune stone is much changed. You can see clearly see serpents there that probably remind of the Norse faith world serpents, but it also has a cross there, and that is already a Christian cross. These stones, and I'm going to show you another one, are from the year around 1000 to 1066 after Christ. This next stone from the same age is known as the Lingsberg Stenen II, and it remembers the Darnegeld. The Darnegeld was a payment Europeans paid to the Norsemen so that they would not raid their coasts. And it reads, And Danner and Huskal and Swain had the stone erected in memory of Ulfriker, their father's father. He had taken two payments in England. May God and God's mother help the souls of the father and son. So these later rune stones not only mention the names and the ancestry and the death of the people, but they also mention the Christian faith and hence the imagery is also changed towards a more Christian outlook. So ironically for this old Norse tradition, who erected the most rune stones? You can see him here getting baptized. It's Harald Bluetooth, the King of Sweden, who was personally responsible for, one can say, the Christianization of Scandinavia. 
And this is the probably the most famous runestone from that time, remembering Harald Bluetooth himself. He also, he, what kind of could say, ordered this stone, remembering his father and his mother, and uh, remembering to the world that he not only converted Sweden, but also Denmark and Norway as well. Ironically, the same one who used so many runestones, aka Harald Bluetooth, and who set so many runestones in the area of Upland, also seemed to have uh, started the end of the runestones by introducing Christianity. Somewhere in the 12th century, the use of runestones was ceased, and what only remains is the magnificent runestones and the names that are sometimes inscripted on them, and also the names of the artisans that made these rune stones, the so-called rune masters. Rune masters were required to obviously be fit for stonework and also very apt in remembering religious texts and poems of the Viking Age. This is an example from a modern rune master. He's called Kalle Dahlberg. So we're the recreation of the Norse faith in modern times that is also called Asatru. These professions again gained prominence. This, I think, is Kalle Dahlberg, who is now calling himself Kalle Runistare, so basically a rune stone maker. So if you want to honor your family, you can now do so by erecting a rune stone yourself and gain plus 20 popularity and maybe plus 5 with other members of your family. Good luck for more videos like this and uh, Stellaris and Crusader Kings 3 and sometimes classic RPGs. Just subscribe to the channel to stay in contact. Have a great time until next time and happy gaming. This is Ivan Vulcan signing out. See you soon and happy gaming.